This evening, uh, going to continue in the book of James, and at this point, he tells us to watch your tongue. How many times have we heard that growing up? Hopefully not too many in a negative sense, but there are also probably times that we have used that phrase ourselves. But uh, the control of our tongue is such a interesting thing that we would think that being such a small element of our body, it would be easy to do. However, how many times do we say something or let something snap out and then say, I wish I didn't say that. I wish that hadn't come out. I wish I said that better. And so as we look at this, the control of the tongue is such an interesting thing. The tongue does have one important lesson it can tell us. Size doesn't matter. Such a small object is so capable of such good or such harm. We'll be looking at quite a few of the verses jumping around a, a bit inside of here, but we're covering James chapter 3 verses 1 through tw uh, 12. He gives several illustrations about small things making a big difference and relating it to the tongue, and we're going to tie that in in a minute. But as we look through, I've kind of picked those out first of the illustrations to get our mind thinking about this. And we look at such a beautiful and big animal as a horse. It carries a person, carries things, pulls a wagon, such a hefty, hardy animal controlled by a bit. And I've chose this picture here on the slide. It's not, you know, obviously it's not fully uh, set yet, but it gave the best illustration of how big is the bit. It is something we can hold inside of our closed hand, and yet that small object with the appropriate setup controls the entire horse and anything else that's going on. We see such precision that can be done. Go to a rodeo and look at the precision of how well that little piece can make a big difference. Look at uh, how this country was f uh, founded, how it was populated with the uh, trails going west and everything of everyone moving across with horse-drawn carriages and buggies and everything else. Such a small item, such a big difference. Or how about a ship? We have this massive ship that is in the waters that is carrying, uh, as we made a comment before services, of all the goods that are imported in or exported out. We load them all on these huge ships and they've got to get where they're going. And relatively speaking, there's this little tiny blade in the back called a rudder that helps control where that big ship goes. Now, it may not turn on a dime, but we see how much of a difference it makes. It is so much better than just going in a straight line and hoping the currents don't push you off track. You ever thought about the origins of a forest fire? Entire lands devastated. We've had several, you know, California's had several over the years. Uh, seems like every year just about. Uh, Hawaii has had one. You know, all these massive forest fires take up thousands of acres, and it all starts with a spark. One little spark that ignites beyond, and it takes up such a huge thing. There's actually a song, um, mostly a camp song, I think. It may or may not be in our books, but it only takes a spark to get a fire going. That's how it is with God's love. One of the verses out of that song. It only takes that spark, that piece of interest. Look at the uh, Acts 2. Is it, only, it took a prick of their hearts. One little prick. Didn't take the whole heart, just one prick. And it opened up a whole new world. <clears throat> or in verse 7, it talks about uh, the taming of every beast was done by man. You know, how do we take and train our animals, you know, for those that have pets, you know, we look at, you know, dogs or, okay, forget cats, they don't listen anyway, they're their own uh, creature. But, you know, for a dog, you can, you can give it certain commands and it will listen. 
if trained up properly. You know, when we look at it, you know, have you been to a zoo? Have you been to a circus or a show? And we have all the beasts. It was said to, from the time of Adam about having dominion over all the beasts. Even the most fierce of beasts will listen when properly trained. And such a small thing does such a big element. It is capable of such great things, but it is also, unfortunately, capable of such hazard. So much destruction can be done just by this simple little piece, this little member of our body. We're given warnings of that by James of how, we can, how the misuse of our tongue can cause destruction. He starts in verse uh, 1. My brethren, not... Let me get my small little member in line so I can say the words that are actually printed right here in front of me. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Almost wonder if sometimes that's a reason why there aren't so many that are interested in doing the ministry in doing pulpit ministry, in going to a mission field. what we But, really, we also know already that every word that proceeds out of our mouth will be held into judgment. Everything that we think, say, or do will be held in judgment. So what's, you know, there is a little bit higher uh, standard that is going to be held before a stricter judgment, but yet we are already judged on everything we say. Why should I be afraid of stepping into the pulpit and saying something before you that I'm not afraid to say to my wife or to say to one of you one-on-one -on -one in a Bible study? They should be one and the same thing. I shouldn't be saying anything different here that I wouldn't say anywhere else. What I say behind someone's back or outside of their earshot should not be anything different than what I would say in front of their face to them. But he does say there will be a stricter judgment. You know, so I have to be sure of what I am saying. I need to do my due diligence to make sure. How many people listen to the preacher? Okay, in one sense of that, I hope everybody. But yet, how many use that as their guideline of everything they do? Because instead of reading it for themselves, instead of verifying it, they just listen to the preacher. Listen to the person that is at, in the pulpit. Unfortunately, I'm human. I could make mistakes. There are some people that are purposefully leading people away from the Bible. That's dangerous. I try not to. I try to stay true to what the Bible says because that is what it says. I'm not the author. I'm not writing this book. God wrote it through the hands of man, through the, Holy Spirit, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I need to respect that. We can also look at, in verse 6, it talks about the church can be pulled down and even local congregations destroyed because of an uncontrolled tongue. How bad can it be? And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. It sets on fire the course of nature and it sets on fire by hell. It's not God's plan for uh, the congregation, for the body to be destroyed. It is that we should elevate one another. It's that we should encourage one another. But if incorrectly used, the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Such a small piece being described as such a big thing. There must be something to it if it's being described in such a way. Probably because if we keep on reading down to verses 8 through 10, it talks about it is too easy to spit out cursings, foul language, negativity, and problems. There goes that phrase, I wish I would have thought before I uh, spoke. I wish I wouldn't have said that. It may have been what we were thinking, but sometimes we need to stop thinking that as well 
and we definitely need to have a delay but, uh, buffer between the brain and the mouth. That old phrase, you have two ears, two eyes, one mouth. Think twice as much before speaking. Listen before speaking. We can also look in verses 9 and 10 and we can see that when used to put down another person, we are actually attacking our maker because he made us in his image. Do we ever think about that one? With it, we bless our God and Father and with it, we curse men who have been made in the simulate of God. When we attack someone else when we attack God's creation we're attacking him we're attacking our creator do we think about that one if our tongue is used to call someone worthless does that person have a soul where did that soul come from now what they may be doing at this time is not worthwhile it is not being productive but how many people in history that we can see in the Bible had that, uh, that focus, but were still able to be utilized for good? Or able to turn around or be used as an example? <coughs> we need to be careful about our tongue, especially the misuse of it. But yet with that also comes things that we can be accomplished with. If we do the right things, if we are able to Heed the warnings here about controlling our tongue and allow it to be used for good. It can be such a motivational piece. It can be such a, uh, a, a great tool for God. Verse 2 says, if we all stum For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word or speech... He is perfect, able to bridle the whole body. If we can control our tongues, then we can control everything. The hardest part about us to control will be our tongues if we can help control it. What are the possibilities? Some people are just have that natural gift of being able to do public speaking or being able to come up with the right thing to say at the right time. Sometimes I'd rather say nothing at all and come back and say, hey, do you remember that conversation we were having? I thought of something else. Instead of saying the wrong thing, sometimes holding back is best. <clears throat> Sometimes we need to be careful of what we do and what we say. Uh, you know, that's been on my mind a lot lately with, uh, with our loss of Anna Jane is that, you know, people come and talk and say something that if you stop and think about it really is not that encouraging. It is not biblical, but yet we think in the religious world today or the religious world today thinks that it is an encouraging statement to say, this and I've got a small list of them going and I've got an idea about turning that into a, a book but and also taking each of those phrases and turning it into a lesson why is that not the best thing for our tongues to be saying it's not that encouraging when you stop and think about it to God's Word and so but yet so the tongue even in trying to be helpful may not be Sometimes if we can step back, if we can bridle our tongue, we can control our whole body. Think about that horse. That bit sits right there in the back of the mouth. Just a little bit of pressure in one way or the other controls the entire horse. Can we do that to ourselves? I don't recommend putting a bit in your mouth and walking around like that, but can we control our tongue? In verse 5, he says, Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a force little fire kindles. Can we utilize our tongue, the little bitty thing, to create such a big thing? 
Can we use that within words of encouragement, words of edification, words of growth, that we can reach out to our friends or neighbors or family members? We can reach out to those around us? Think about an evangelist who goes from city to city, place to place. Think about Bible studies that grow, that continue on, and to all of a sudden we have someone else sitting amongst us. We have someone else that we can call brother or sister in Christ. What did Peter do with his tongue on the day of Pentecost? Little bitty member spoke to a crowd. And that day, 2,000 souls were added. What if he never used his tongue? What if he never stood up? He used what he had to the edification of God and the deliverance of his message. And that day, 2,000 were added. We see throughout the book of Acts, and great multitudes were added. How great a fire did that one little spark cause? <clears throat> Again, in verse 7, bringing out wild beasts can be tamed. We can use our tongue in such a way that we can influence the path of the wicked, of the wild, of the, you know, in this is talking about wild beasts, it's talking about every kind of beast and bird or reptile, it's talking about all these different things. However, think about the influence it could have on a leader. We're to pray for our leaders, but can we also not try to encourage them? Especially if they are, let's just call it what it is. Let's categorize the activities of mankind like a wild beast. The activities of sin that we talked about this morning are like a wild beast. Can we try to speak in such a way? As an EMT, we're taught that in a stressful situation and, and everyone's wound up and just so you know frantic, Come in and talk calmly. Talk in a way that you want your patient to respond to. They're sitting there hyperventilating and about to pass out and freaking out, and how am I going to talk? Am I, oh, you need to slow down and talk. No. Slow, deep breaths. Now, I know that this person is not going to just instantly go slow, deep breaths. You know, they're sitting there panicked and frustrated and, you know, freaked out. Slow easy conversation. I need to control my tongue in that situation to ease the tension of the room, to slow things down. And sometimes the way we say it, yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. Is a huge difference in how we say something. How we approach something, whether we are sharp and rash at it, or just can make a big difference as to whether that lion decides to eat you or not. For your adversary, the devil is a, as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. If you're over there being frantic and crazy, he's probably going to look at you first. Ooh, lively. Good. What can we do with such a small thing? <clears throat> We can also look at the first part of verse 10, and because we're looking at the positivity of it, you know, we need to be careful, you know, unfortunately the same, verse 10 says, out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. But let's look at the first part of that. Out of the mouth proceeds blessings. Speak as the oracles of God. If we have read our Bibles, we understand what it says, we know what it says, we can use our mouths, our tongues, our speech to effectively give out blessings. Now, we're not giving out blessings as they did in the Old Testament where, you know, this, 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 and those things definitely came true, but God has already given us the blessings that we are to share with one another. We have the blessing of the hope of eternal life in heaven with him. That is a blessing he gave us and told us to give to everyone else that will listen. Do we use our mouth to give out those blessings? Or do we fall into the trap of the devil and give out his cursings? 
We need to be careful what we use and what we do. Just as we would if we go and look in the tool shed or uh, the toolbox or any uh, location, we have so many tools available to us. Each one has its own purpose. The tongue has its own purpose. Our hands have an, their own purpose. There's a reason we have so many elements to our body. There's a reason that as a congregation, we each find that each of us have different abilities. Do we utilize each other for the right abilities? Yes, I can take a screwdriver off the shelf and, shelf and go out and start chipping ice with it. You'll get someone who's a, uh, who, who appreciates screwdrivers and they'll cringe at that statement. It's like, oh, don't do that. There's another tool that could be used for it. You know, but we can also see where a rock can be used to build great buildings or to kill people. What was the first murder on earth? What was the weapon used? A rock. If we ban all rocks, then we have nothing to build our buildings with. We have so many issues that could prevail from it. With our tongue, it can be used for good. Let's just leave it at that. It can be used for good. It can be. Will it? Will we use it for good? Will we use what we have, use our tongue, use our speech to be able to glorify God in all that we do and say? in our interactions with other people. Let's try and make that our aim, our goal. You know, and I think that's a lot, one of those lifelong uh, ambitions because, you know, every now and then it does slip and something comes out. But the goal is to try to control it because if we can control the tongue, we control the whole body. Hopefully this is more of a lesson to remind us of that importance. And, you know, for anyone listening that needs to focus on that, then I pray that we're able to. I, I hope that through the lesson, through the ideas here, that we can look at what James is saying and control the tongue. Such a powerful thing. Such a simple thing. But if we take and learn what God wants us to do, follow his example the tongue will follow we've got to train the tongue just like any other member of the body if i want to be able to pick up my bible and open to a certain spot and read that spot i've got to train my fingers to grab it open it and my eyes to read it i've got to train my tongue to do the same thing if we need help with that let's try and focus that as maybe that's our next resolution that's our next idea to focus on controlling the tongue and there's another good old saying that's out there if you ain't got nothing nice to say don't say nothing at all sometimes we can do that you know if we stop saying the wrong things and just say nothing that's an improvement but hopefully the right things will come if there's anyone that needs any assistance or would like the uh, prayers or support of the congregation. Now's the time that you may come forward. Once again, we stand and sing.